Okay, hi, we're gonna look at measures of central tendency. So this is our mean, our median, and our mode. There are others, but these are the three that we're gonna focus on uh, in this class. And I have a problem up here with some data that we are gonna take those three measures of. So a patient's total calcium test gave the following readings. There are 10 data values right here. Um, we'll start with our mean. Remember that the mean is just the average, which is probably what you have studied before and you've called it an average. Um, some of you may have already called it a mean. This formula, we're going to use a sample mean because this, of course, is not the total calcium levels for this person. All of their total cal calcium levels, that's what it would have to be to get our population. So this is a sample, so we'll use sample notation for the mean which is x bar, and the formula for that is equal to the sum of all of the x's divided by n. This notation, this is a summation notation. It means take the sum of what follows it. And here what follows it are the x's, and our x's in statistics always re represent our data values. So these, all these data values, these 10 data values are x's, so this says take the sum of all the x's. I'll write that for you. Take the sum of the x's. Okay, and then we're dividing that by n. n, the small n, represents our sample size. It says sample again, and so we will use the small n, 10 data values, so our n is going to be 10 here. All right, so let's do it. Take the sum of all these data values, all these x's, so we'll take our each data value, add them all up. And I have to go into the second line here, but we're just adding them all up. Okay, so that is the sum of all the x's. And then we are dividing this division bar by the number of data values that there are. There are 10 of them. So when we do this, the sum ends up being 99.5. Okay, so that's the sum of all of our x's is a 99.5, the top of this formula. And we're dividing by 10. So this is 9.95 as our mean. And if you look at that data, this should be a measure of central tendency. So it should land you know, within this data. It should make sense for it to be what that center of the data is doing. And we'll be able to see it better, you know, what the central is when we get this data in order. And we need to get it in order in order to do our median. So let's look at our median now. A reminder, I'm going to put it up here. Our mean was 9.95, just so that we have it for comparison's sake. So we look at these other measures of central tendency. The median is the middle. It is the middle data value. We call it the midpoint of the data array. And the data array is always the data arranged from least to greatest. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is take this data and arrange it from least to greatest. Um, so the smallest data value here is 8.8. .8. And you can kind of do that and maybe cross it off. I'm going to put a dot by it so I can keep on using it. Um, and then we go to 8.9. Put a dot by it, and I'll go ahead and get these up here for us. It's nice to have it all on one line so that you can clearly see the middle here. Okay, make sure that I have 10 data points up here. And I do, so 10 data points arranged in order from least to greatest. This is increasing order. Um, the median is the midpoint of this data array. However, we have 10, and so that means that we don't really have a midpoint. We have in between two data values is where the middle of our data lies. 
So when we have this happen, we take the, mid, the mean of the two midpoints. So we kind of have two midpoints happening here. You cannot have two medians. That doesn't make sense. You need a clear one value. And so we'll take the mean or the average of these two data values by adding them together and dividing by two. So our median is 9.85. Okay, notice how close it is to our mean. The mean, though, is affected by outliers. So we have kind of a jump here um, from the 11.2 to the 12.1, which is going to cause our mean to be just a little bit higher. But that's not really an outlier. Okay, we'll go ahead and write that here and look at our third measure of central tendency, which is our mode. The mode is the value that occurs the most often. Um, however, on this data set, you saw when I had them in order, I wish I still had it, um, we don't have a number that repeats. We don't have one. And so we have no mode. However, just for the sake of giving you something for the mode, um, let's round this data to whole numbers and put it um, in order. So 9.3 would be, I'm not going to put it in order, I'm just going to round this data. 9.3 would be 9, 8.8 .8 would round to 9, and so on. So I'm going to round this data to the nearest whole number, and maybe I would have a mode then. So 9.8 would round to 10, so on. Now the 11 and 12 is not repeated, but we do see that the 9 and the 10 are repeated. Both of them are repeated four times, so here we actually have two modes of our rounded data. Um, so our modes here are 9 and 10. We have a bimodal data set with the rounded data. All right, there's our measures of central tendency, our mean of 9.95, our median of 9.85, and our mode of the rounded data of 9 and 10, which is kind of interesting. Um, and they all do line up. They're all very similar. It doesn't always happen, but this is a nice data set. And calcium tests should um, have a nice, clear mean, median, and mode that are similar.